in the past week, open source has really disrupted the AI LLM game. A new open source model was dropped and now is available to all called DeepSeek. Now, it's been over a month since this has actually been released, and we're going to be getting into all the events and impact that the DeepSeek open source project and model has caused, as it has impacted a lot of the tech industry. So first off, what is DeepSeek? Well, DeepSeek is a Chinese artificial intelligence company that is developing large language models or LLMs. It describes itself as a strong mixture of experts MOE language model with 671 billion parameters and 37 billion activated for each individual token. So there's been a lot of wild developments in this new open source AI project. And could you believe that it's disrupted companies like OpenAI, Microsoft, and even NVIDIA as some of them take the largest losses in history over a single day? And what also is impressive, their DeepSeek app had been charting number one in the App Store over the last couple days, which seemingly is why it got super noticed. So we're going to talk about the capabilities here of DeepSeek and the versions available, but I do want to talk about the aim and approach here. It seems like this new DeepSeek model is trying to take aim at the big tech companies that seemingly have all the ownership of AI models, close sourcing them, at least the biggest models that are the most efficient. Think of things like a one from ChatGPT, Claude Sonnet 3.5, Grok, and more. What DeepSeek version three actually does is level the playing field because not only can we now on par have a model that performs just as well as the rest, but in some cases beats the other models and can be used on your own local hardware. So it says here, DeepSeek V3 achieves significant breakthrough in inference and speed over previous models. So this is not the first version, as the name would suggest, available from DeepSeek, but it is DeepSeek version three. And why is this important? Where does the milestone come from? Well, with the 671 billion parameter set, we can see how that compares against the other models and different benchmarks. Now, what we're looking at here is our score. So it has an 88.5 and GPT 4.0 has a 87.2. So it actually beats 4.0 in this case, but where it's even more fascinating are the benchmarks where it completely beats every other model, including the MMLU Redux, Drop 3 Shot F1, Long Bench, and many more. Now this is English evaluation. We also have code, math, and Chinese. Well, since it's a Chinese model, I would expect this to actually be the best. And sure enough, two out of the three, it performs the best with only Quen being able to compete against it. So one big thing that we got out of all of this, also the Deep Sea Company was actually created over a year ago in 2023. Now, the spectacular part is they keep releasing versions, starting with Deep Seek version 2.5, which was able to search the web on December 10th, going into DeepSeek version three, which had even faster, aka three times faster than version two, enhanced capabilities, API compatibility remaining with full open source models and papers. That's the big deal here. Even though that they have their own app called the DeepSeek app, which was released on 01 2025 and charting towards the top of all app stores, very quickly. That's why it seems like it's received major attention as it's a competitive pressure on proprietary models, such as OpenAI, such as Claude 3.5 and others. This seems to have caused a disruption in the pricing models and an acceleration in innovation because there's been market volatility and investor concerns right after this has all dropped, which has been amazing. Introducing the DeepSeek app, which was powered by the world-class DeepSeek version three LLM model, you could use the online version in order to start asking questions, much like you do with ChatGPT. But the big difference here is, well, we can't just skim over the fact that it's actually owned by a Chinese company. Founded by a Chinese entrepreneur who worked with hedge funds, there's definitely real privacy concerns here, including using your user data and personal information, chat history, and uploaded files that are more than likely located in China, what you want to do with your data is up to you, but think about before using the actual online version. I know it's not something I would be comfortable with myself, so I would be avoiding that. But where this is awesome is that we have an open source version as well that we can actually download and use on our computers. If you want, you can allow it to access the internet. Otherwise, you don't have to. That way, you're shielded from giving information out to the internet. You can keep everything local, and that's the highlight here. Just like you can log in 
to OpenAI's portal, you can do the same thing with DeepSeek. There's many channels already talking about this, including Fireship, Big Tech, and Panic Mode. Did DeepSeek R1 just pop the AI bubble? And many more videos coming out, which a lot of the big tech companies should be very worried because not only were they able to bring the cost of training down, but they've also opened up a whole new ecosystem with this open source model where we can run it on our own hardware and realistic hardware at that. Here's another big deal as they've released the DeepSeek version three technical report that goes into the abstract of how this model and the benchmarks work. Before we get into some of this abstract, make sure to smash that like button for me to get this out to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe below if you're enjoying videos like this. Sometimes YouTube gets finicky and doesn't send out new videos and you wouldn't wanna miss new content on Linux and open source programming. So the technical report is quite an amazing read with over 53 pages explaining the research behind DeepSeek. They start out by presenting what DeepSeek is, especially the version three model and how it was trained. The incredible part here is DeepSeek version three required only 2.8 million H800 GPU hours for its full training set, which may not mean much to you, but I'm gonna get into how that breaks down, how its API costs differ from the competition as well, and how that led to the NVIDIA Corporation losing nearly $600 billion in just a single day. As its market cap was previously 3.5, has been diminished to lower than 2.9 trillion. That's pretty wild in a single day as NVIDIA has really been cleaning up in the AI space because of the way it's efficiently using computational resources, requiring less GPUs with more advanced methods of training, the way it's using architectures and paying attention to latent loads. This open source collaboration can not only advance researchers and developers contributions, but now we have existing work to look on and we might've just seen the first clue to a rapid decline in training just because it seems like we're coming towards some sort of a barrier at least kind of shown by this model does it really require so much hardware in order to train these things how can such a lean company affect all these closed source models what were they missing as we had a market cap of 3.6 trillion all the way down to 2.9 for nvidia now this of course will come up as even if you run locally you're going to need gpus and npus in order to run these AI large language models here on your edge or local systems. So I don't think they're too worried about that. It's probably just a due correction for some of these companies, at least in my mind. But with the reduced training costs and open source accessibility, it'd be wild to think that we're not gonna see some sort of change on how training AI is going to be approached from now on. The DeepSeek version three base model and version three have both 671 billion total parameters. That's over a half a trillion to put it into context. And its context length is 128,000, meaning you can throw in 128,000 tokens that it can process through and answer upon whenever you give it a question. As far as I can tell, the size of the V3 model is around 680-ish gigabytes and requires a substantial amount of VRAM to actually run it if you want to run it at a decent speed. I've already seen people trying to put together M4 Ultras in order to run with actually surprisingly good results, achieving over 30 tokens per second, which is quite fast. But people have even ran this locally with Raspberry Pis reaching a very low limit. And of course not running the main model, which has the 641 billion parameters, instead running things like a 7 billion parameter model and getting lower than one token per second. Regardless, it's running on their own hardware, which is the big deal here. I mean, this is a big deal for small companies as we have DeepSeek available, and now we can run, instead of running things in the cloud and getting responses back from an API to our server, well, now we can take a server, deploy this LLM on it, and actually process everything locally. This is important, very important. As these small businesses do not have to worry about data privacy and security, as they're running it locally, it's not available to the cloud. It's gonna have reduced latency, you're gonna have complete customization control, Everything that OpenAI was spouting at the beginning is happening from DeepSeek actually, which is kind of funny as you would not expect that, especially from a Chinese company. Now there are some censorship and privacy concerns, at least when you're using the official application or the API. Versions of R1 uses censorship mechanisms for sensitive topics, especially those considered politically sensitive, at least for China. So that's always one thing to take in mind as we understand the models and pricing of this exact model. 
What's fascinating here is actually the amount of cost it is for 1 million tokens of input, depending on if it's a cash hit or a miss. Let's just say it's a miss, it's 14 cents. And the output price is 28 cents. This is using the DeepSeek chat. The reasoner costs a little more at 55 cents and $2.19 for output. Now, how does that compare to OpenAI's pricing? Well, if we look at their pricing chart, we see that it's for the 4.0 model, two dollars and fifty cents for one million input tokens and ten dollars for one million output tokens this is another reason why deep seek has caused such a disruption not only is it less cost but they spent less training the model how did this training happen and what did it cost well pre-training was on 1.8 million tokens 87 percent is source code 10 percent code related english on github markdown and stack exchange and 3% code unrelated Chinese. Long context, pre-training 200 billion tokens. This extends from the length of 4K to 16K produced on the base models. Supervised fine tuning was 2 billion tokens of instruction data. This produced the instruct model. They were trained on clusters of A100s and H800 NVIDIA GPUs. You might be asking how, because China does not actually have access to those GPUs, or at least there's kind of a a ban of using these types of GPUs. Well, this was before the ban where they got a hold of all these GPUs and now they're using them to their full potential. And this chart here shows us the wild results. After training, it was deployed on H800 clusters. The H800 within a cluster are connected by NV link. The clusters are connected by Infinity Band. The total cost of training the V3 model, we'll just look at the total down here. It's 5.5 million US dollars. Now, some of you might be saying that's a ton of money. Yes, it is. But when you compare it to reports of OpenAI spending nearly 50 to 100 million dollars just to train its four model, we start seeing why this is causing such a substantial hurt, at least on the training side of things. They've made an efficient model that seemingly takes 10 times less to actually produce, and even a better model as it matches in comparison to 4.0 and, and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. That's just amazing. And this is just the beginning as, as we can make even more efficiency improvements because we have the open source model available to us. This code is available and how they train this data set, I really doubt that they're already fully optimized. I think this just opens up more optimizations for everybody. As DeepSeek V3 gives us many scores, the API pricing update has just made it the same as version two, which is extraordinarily low. There's really three hits here. One, the amount that it cost to train the model was significantly reduced. Two, the cost to using the API has been significantly decreased, although be careful what you send to the API. And three, it's actually comparable to some of the latest and greatest available LLMs out there. With the model being open sourced, it's fascinating to see this latest disruption in the AI market. As we compare DeepSeek version three, when it comes to using the API price, this is basically the amount it costs per 1 million tokens. It surpasses all the varying different models available. It even put itself in a new performance to price ratio optimum range, which is kind of funny, but basically you're paying a lot less to use this model in comparison to the rest. But forget paying anything as you can run it locally. Yeah, sure, the V3 API tokens pay as you go pricing is great, but why not just use it on edge or local? hardware. In the coming weeks, I see many developers and researchers going through the contents of the technical paper so they can understand how exactly everything was done and what they can use in order to figure out how to optimize their own tra training and pre-training. Can you believe such a disruption has happened to companies like OpenAI, Microsoft, and even NVIDIA? This has been one of the largest losses in history when it comes to market capital in a single day. You might be asking, yourself what's next and what other breakthroughs are going to happen in open source, especially with this being released. We do have DeepSeek to thank for releasing this new open source Edge AI as its successes are going to produce more open source models, highlighting a community driven development as we all are already aware on this channel. Open source is great because it promotes transparency, a healthy marketplace and shared progress of the overall tech industry. We'll see how researchers, developers, and organizations worldwide build upon this new open source model. I'm going to post a link in the description below to this technical report. Some of you might want to check this out. The economics here are quite amazing. Let me know what you think about potentially running a open source model locally on Linux. 
Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. Also smash that like button and catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.